So welcome back to day two. I like this two day format, this is pretty cool. I think yesterday you saw that we haven't been sitting on our hands for the last year. Some pretty dramatic changes in the performance of BricsCAD BIM, the capabilities of BricsCAD BIM. A tool that really is pretty amazing considering, I, th I think I brought this up yesterday and we put it on social media, but I don't know if everybody here actually realizes that Jacob did that entire demo on a Dell XPS 15 laptop. 32 gig of RAM, terabyte SSD, and the low res screen, not the 4K. That was pretty amazing performance. But today we're gonna to continue the story and this morning we're going to start out and show you what's new in Bricks CAD V19. But before we do that, I have two of my very favorite people that I want to introduce. Robert Green, owner of Robert Green Consulting and a fellow Hoosier, that's he's from the state of Indiana in the USA like me. And the dear Heidi Hewitt, who has come to Brixis uh, and really chronicled her adventures in moving from that other CAD product to BricsCAD over the last year. If you haven't seen her work on the Brixis blog, you should go there, not right now, but tonight while you're having a pint, go and check out the work that Heidi's done. They're doing a session about switching to BricsCAD and I think that it will be very informative for you. That will be the lead in to other amazing things happening this morning. So thank you for being here and it's time to start the show. Come on up. Um, so my name is Robert Green and I'm based in the United States in Atlanta, Georgia. And I had the uh, pleasure of becoming a Brixis migration consultant last year and, and uh, have been working with customers a good bit uh, over the last year to help them migrate from other products to BricsCAD. So I'll be sharing some of that experience with you and Heidi will be doing some other portions of the presentation. And as Don mentioned, I'm Heidi Hewitt and I'm the user success manager with Brixis. Uh, but after 30 years of working with AutoCAD and uh, almost as long working for the makers of AutoCAD, I've just recently made the switch to BricsCAD. So I'll be sharing my experience with you. Awesome. Shall we dive in? <coughs> I think it's reasonable to ask this question. Why switch? Because my clients all have some sort of CAD solution already. It's already working. They're producing some works with it. So when I get the email or I get the phone call or whatever, the question from them is almost always, why should we switch? I do think that's a reasonable question and I'd like to start out our, our conversation today with talking a little bit about that. I've noticed that five things seem to recur in my initial conversations with, with companies that want to look at BricsCAD or they want to migrate to BricsCAD. And the interesting thing is it almost always starts with CAD administrators or IT administrators, and it is almost always financial, almost always. So you will see a strong financial thread running through these five themes. And we'll just uh, go ahead and talk to you just as I would talking to a client uh, who asked me, why should I switch? The first thing I want to point out is cost. If you're in business, you're not in business to lose money. You're in business to make money and a penny saved is a penny earned, Benjamin Franklin. So if we look at the total cost of procuring software and maintaining it over some number of years, an interesting thing starts to occur. Now what this is, is it is uh, retail or suggested pricing for BricsCAD, which is blue, and AutoCAD, which is red. And this is actually the, uh, the BricsCAD Pro so we can look at a, a year one acquisition cost of about $970 US, and I know it varies by your locality, but it's pretty, pretty close and the ratios are almost exactly the same. So what we see is compared to the rental schema of ownership that Autodesk is, is now imposing, it is actually cheaper to purchase a perpetual copy of BricsCAD and maintain it in the first year than it is to rent. 
Now, you can make the argument that perhaps in the first year there's some training expenses, and this is a valid concern. I'll talk about that some. But my point is, your cost of entry is even lower than one year of rental. What starts to happen in the next few years becomes very interesting, and I've just plugged in some numbers which you can see on the pie chart over here. And for my customers uh, stateside, BricsCAD Pro, which is the mid-tier, essentially apples to apples uh, comparison to AutoCAD, we look at a total cost of three-year ownership of 1,410 U.S. dollars versus 4,725 U.S. dollars. To put that in investment parlance, you're getting a 234% return on your money in three years by switching to BricsCAD, and this is why people are interested. If you do this over five years, the numbers jump even higher, 324%. So when you make this financial argument, you immediately have people's attention. <laughs> of course, it's not just purchasing software, it's maintaining it and keeping it current. And this is also another area where maintenance factors or costs are lower with BricsCAD than they would be with competition. At $220 uh, per year, an all-in is, is the slang for it, an all-in maintenance plan includes upgrades, which you may or may not choose to implement. I think you will because you'll see cool stuff. And that this way you know that you have access to support ticketing, um, new product upgrades, everything, so basically all-in. You have all, all the resources. That is much less than maintaining a $1,575 per year rental, which you are compelled to maintain. So your year two, year three, year four cost, substantially lower, much, much lower uh, than being on a rental subscription. This is one thing I, I was lucky enough to attend a talk uh, yesterday when Mark spoke about, we want you to have freedom of choice. And this is something my customers uh, are, are very much dialed into. These are perpetual licenses. You can purchase the software, but you can rent it if you want to, if that makes more sense for peak demand. Uh, you can run it in standalone mode, you can network it, and you can maintenance it, you can not maintenance it. The point is, you pick what's right for you. And my customers do like this. As, compelled to, as compared to, you must rent, and that is it. Ease of adoption. When we're talking about moving from competing ca popular CAD products that I see out there in the market, the interface for BricsCAD is very familiar. It's very easy for people to move over. It really is, and I'll, I'll share some of my tips a bit later in, in the presentation uh, for, for how this works, but people really do get moving along quickly. What this means for me financially is I don't have to spend a lot of money training them. Management's ears perk up when you say that. Time is money. And the other thing is it's perpetual. So what if a financial disaster were to occur and your business were in dire financial straits, which we saw in the 2009-2010 recession in the United States? If everything gets as bad as possible, your software keeps running. If you're on a rental subscription, your software stops running. And while nobody plans on being in a death spiral financial situation, sometimes it does occur. And so this is a, a good insurance policy to have to know that it's there. So usually at this point, I've had this conversation with an IT director or a CAD manager or somebody like that up, up in management of a company, um, and I'm aware that not all five of these factors will be applicable to everyone, but I bet if you do the math on your own, you'll see some of these things jump out of the spreadsheet at you, uh, and, and it will make sense for you. Do the math for yourself, don't believe me. Do the math for yourself and consider the options and consider the flexibilities. And really what I'm hearing is, why would we not switch to this? People just aren't aware. And uh, man, did things change yesterday morning, huh? With the Hexagon involvement, so a you know, much, much larger, you know, more stable infrastructure. Um, so yeah, it's, it's at this point, why not? Why would you not at least do your due diligence and look at the numbers? So Heidi, let's say that we have spoken to a company and they're ready to start making the switch, they're financially interested. When we start to switch over, I mean, your focus is the user, not the accountant. So how are you going to make people feel easier about doing the switch? So that's, that's a really good question. And as Robert has so clearly shown, BricsCAD makes financial sense. But it's not just about the cost. 
I've been a user, a CAD user, for 30 years, but not once have I paid for it out of my own pocket. <laughs> Does that mean that I'm any less interested or concerned about making the switch to a totally new CAD system? Not, not at all, right? It's, I'm definitely concerned about it because I still have to be comfortable and I still have to be productive. So that's where um, I'm going to share my experience with you with BricsCAD. <coughs> So just my first um, kind of primary three impressions as I started working with BricsCAD just recently. First of all, and maybe most importantly, is it was familiar to me. It's DWG based, and which means that all my drawings that I've worked on for years and that I'm still currently working on, I could just bring straight into, auto, into BricsCAD. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Knew I had to do that once. <laughs> Um, so I can bring it straight into, straight into BricsCAD. I don't have to do any conversions. I don't have to import geometry. It just comes right in. And I've talked to a few people about it, people that use AutoCAD. And when they ask me, you know, well, what do you have to do? I'm like, no, no, you don't have to do anything. You just open it. It's just there, and it saves it as DWG. That is the file format. So, so that is important. But it's more than that. It's the productivity. And when you first open BricsCAD, especially coming from an AutoCAD environment or other similar DWG-based CAD applications, it's familiar right off the bat. And I think you'll see, as, as we show you um, later this morning, the upcoming release, B19 of BricsCAD, you'll see that's even more the case. We have um, all the elements that you might be familiar with, ribbons, toolbars, menus, um, <coughs> pa panels, all of them completely customizable. Uh, so we've got that very familiar environment that you'd be used to, but, and if you um, use the command line, which I know even for myself, I'd love to use the, the user interface tools, but when I'm in a rush and I just don't even want to think, I just go to the command line without even realizing it. I'm just keying things in. And it is the same. If you use the move command, the line command, you type M or L, it, you come right into BricsCAD and just start using it that way. So there's really no transition needed. But <clears throat> that brings us to the next um, point, which is it's not, it doesn't stop at familiar. I mean, that would be great. I would be totally happy to have familiar, but it goes so far beyond that. It's innovative. So once I get comfortable and I realize that, oh, this is just what I've been using for 30 years, I can go on and, and start experimenting with these other tools that I never would have even imagined. Um, the quad cursor is a good example. That enables um, you to access tools right there at the, at the cursor. They're con contextual, so it knows what object you've selected, how you t tend to edit that type of object, and it offer you, offers you the tools right there. So intelligent quad cursor is, is one, of the, um, one of the many innovative tools. And again, completely customizable. Another thing that I found um, different but in, in um, inspiring, I guess, is the Drawing Explorer. There's so many definitions that are saved in a drawing, like um, dimension styles, text styles, blocks, all those definitions are saved in a drawing. I don't have to look in a bunch of different places to find them. They're all in one location, the Drawing Explorer. The settings dialog is something else. I'm used to having to go to multiple, <laughs> excuse me, I'm just getting over a cold, so sorry about the coughing every once in a while. Um, I'm used to going to many different, <laughs> thanks, um, many different locations, you know, dimension style settings or all these different uh, places to set various variables. And there's over 9,000 variables, 900, sorry, variables, and that would be a lot. <laughs> um, in BricsCAD, I can go to one central location, the settings dialog box, and I can key in, I don't even have to know the exact variable name. As long as I know something close to it, I can key that in and search for it, get right to it. And I want to point out just quickly here in the upcoming release, B19, we have uh, addition or enhancements to the settings dialog box where you can actually see highlighted in blue in this example, it will show you the settings that are different from the default settings. So that's, that's valuable. It's sometimes, you know, you get used to default settings and you want to see quickly what's different. But what I find really that valuable is if you have a drawing that shows, you know, something's just not behaving right and you can't figure out what combination or what var variables are different from this other drawing that seems to beha behave exactly how you expect. You can actually use the drawing compare tool in BricsCAD and if you pull up settings, it will show you the differences between those two drawing settings. So really great enhancements that are in B19. 
And the last one, again, these are just a few of the intuitive tools that, that I've come across, and we'll talk about more um, coming up in just a little bit later, but the manipulator. I love the manipulator. I love to work in 3D, but it's not just about 3D. It's a tool that you just can't do with, once you get used to it, you can't even do without it in 2D as well, because it enables you to move, copy, rotate, scale, mirror, all along, you know, constraining to a specific axis or plane, very intuitively, both in 2D and 3D. So innovative, and then, oops. Oh. Everybody has trouble with these, huh? There it is. Um, <clears throat> and then the last thing that, again, as I kind of made my journey through of learning BricsCAD and what it, all it has to offer, and kind of the point that I'm right at right now is inspiring. I haven't yet had the chance to use a lot of the BIM or sheet metal tools yet, but I can't wait. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because it's, I'm able to take everything I know, everything I've done for the last 30 years. If, I, if you are a 2D drafter, maybe you've never done 3D, you've used 2D typical CAD tools for the last 10, 20, 30 years, you can take all that knowledge right into BricsCAD and start using 3D, using those same tools that you're used to in, in 2D, like the manipulator and some of these other tools that we'll talk about later as well. And if you are just now trying to go beyond tip, um, regular 3D into BIM or into manufacturing, easy transition. You just take all that knowledge you have from 2D and 3D, you use those same tools as you move on into the more advanced products. So to me, that is so inspiring and just I don't have to throw away all that experience I have previously and start over with a new, a new product in a different file format. So you've seen how it makes financial sense with BricsCAD, and you've seen what the user experience is, the, the familiarity and all of that. But Robert, what does it take to migrate? Yeah, that's a good question. So I'm, I'm going to grab the clicker there, if I might. Oh, yes, sorry. Thank you, thank you. So another question that I'm frequently prompted with is we've set up a lot of customizations and resources over the years uh, in our prior CAD product, and what is it going to take me to bring that type of automation over? Do I have to start again? Uh, which would be tremendously costly and labor intensive, and the answer is really no. So yeah, what, what does it take to migrate? It's not this much of an effort. Let's just kind of start with a boilerplate list. We have to figure out what sort of files, customizations, and resources we're going to bring over into BricsCAD. Uh, for example, do you have your own CUIs, toolbars, ribbon elements? Those are all portable. Do you have Lisp, which a lot of us probably do. I should have asked, how many CAD managers are in the room? A few, not many, okay. We have a lot of you know, customization investment in these files and they come right over and they load right in and run. Plotter configurations, page setups, palettes, blocks, a lot of times the CAD engine that you're using is so optimized to the way that you work that bringing these customizations over is going to be a huge financial benefit. It's going to make the cost of implementation much, much, much lower. Sheet sets, your template files, etc. The point is that the assets that you have invested in over the years will come over. They will port over. You do not have to start again. And that, that makes the uh, migration process that I've done with some of my clients in, in the range of perhaps a week, and that's inclusive of training and discovery and bringing over the customization. It's not a big effort. It's really kind of surprising. Um, your network resources do <laughs> think about uh, some factors like this. Where are you going to put all these files, right? Your, your list routines and you know, all your blocks, your palettes, et cetera. Uh, in the settings dialog, which I apologize for that being down so low, uh, we, can, we can simply go in and set our search paths. And here's a bonus. If you have automation tools like Lisp or registry files that set those for you, they use the same registry keys as that other CAD product. So it'll just put right in there and work straight away. That surprised me. That was a bonus as far as I was concerned. Set up your folders that you're going to need to host the files. Make sure your security is set correctly on that stuff. And then you can go into the settings dialog box and simply push out a profile, which uh, has all of your settings and stuff embedded in it. And you can use that to roll those changes out around all the other machines in your network. 
So it's, uh, it's very straightforward to roll out as well. Obviously, if you want to have a network deployment, uh, you will need to designate a license server, but it's very straightforward, and you just put in the license keys, and away you go. So really, the migration of this, uh, it's, I think it's less painful than an upgrade, based on what I've done so far. OK, one more thing I have to get up on. I have to lecture just a little bit. If you have been using XYZ CAD, or that other CAD product, for 30 years, Chances are you have put upgrade on top of upgrade on top of upgrade on top of upgrade. And when I go into these client servers, what I see is blocks, copies of blocks, copies of blocks two, Dean's copy of blocks, extra backup copy of blocks, et cetera. I see gigabytes of junk. Clean it out, right? <laughs> BricsCAD, one, one thing that we don't talk about enough is that BricsCAD's fast. It executes very quickly. And if you combine that with a nice, clean environment, it's going to run even faster. And there weren't that many of my CAD administrator brothers and sisters in the room, but I have never been yelled at because the CAD system ran too fast. Never once. So get it nice and clean, away you go. It's a beautiful, quick experience. It oh, by the way, it installs quickly, too. It's just a matter of a couple of minutes. So. That's great. I don't think anything can ever be too clean or too fast. So let's kind of recap. We justified this thing financially. We talked about it not being threatening to the user who's migrating to it. We talked a little bit about the migration being relatively painless. So I'm convinced. Heidi, where do I go to get some learning resources? So there, we have a lot of great resources available. And I can't remember if my slides are the build. Let me check. Um, yeah, so here we have a lot of great resources available. We meant to mention at the beginning and forgot, if you have a QR reader on your phone, you may want to just come up here and, and capture some of these um, while, we're, while we're talking. But <clears throat> I'm going to um, go over there and just take you to, through some of these. I won't go into detail, but um, you know, starting with learning some of the learning resources, the uh, BricsCAD Online Help okay. has actually been updated just um, recently. get my screen there we go so this is a, a quick look at the updated online help a great resource for all kinds of, of help for our different product offerings you can click in there and explore the different um, help uh, tools that are available there's links to videos just about anything you can imagine also uh, the, these lessons these are relatively new as well and these are great if you're coming if you're completely new to CAD so it's got a lot of fundamental lessons for just getting getting started in, in bricks CAD my archive, and I think maybe Don alluded to this earlier, um, that I, for my transition to BricsCAD, I actually went through starting with the most basic tools in the uh, BricsCAD Classic, and I documented each set of tools, drawing tools, editing tools, things that I found that were different from what I was used to. So I have a series of, I think it's, what is that, <laughs> yeah, 30, 33, it looks like, um, blog posts up here that just documenting, they don't go into a lot of detail, but they go through my experience and just maybe what to expect. So if you're coming from AutoCAD, this is a really good resource to look at. Um, but even if you're new to BricsCAD, it also just gives you a good overview of what's, what functionality is available. Um, and then we also have this BricsCAD for AutoCAD users guide, which goes through in very, um, it's very detailed about a, a comparison between BricsCAD and AutoCAD. And the last one I want to mention up here is the YouTube channel, another great resource to go to. If you go to youtube.com slash Brixis, you'll find a lot of different uh, videos up here, including some that we do with Facebook Live. And then after being live on Facebook, we actually post the video up here. So these are just some of the resources that are available. So. Go forward. Robert. Yeah. <laughs> So we talked about the finances, we've talked about the experience, we talked about the, um, the, some of the resources that are available, but then how do you implement those? How do you get people actually in there using it? Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, I, I have to say I've changed my thinking on this because ordinarily uh, my, my default mode of operation has always been get your standards in place and then teach people your standards. And, uh, but when you're changing somebody over or you're switching, which is our theme, it's reasonable to expect that the person might be apprehensive. 
uh, because you are changing their tool after all. This is something they've been working with for a very long time. So what I have learned basically is we're going to stress what's the same. That, that's what I lead with, it's, it's familiar, and I can tell you that it's simple, and, and I can believe that it's simple, but you're not really going to believe me until you see that it's simple. So the philosophy that I've kind of gotten to now is to have what we call laptop parties. And they're typically combined with a lunch and learn. What we do is go down to the IT department that always has four or five low-end laptops sitting around, and we just put BricsCAD on it. It could be an evaluation copy. That's something you can do even before you buy the software. And just simply have people try it. Okay, guys, here it is. Try it. And immediately they look at you with that deer in headlights look. But then they start using it a little bit, and they see, yeah, this is pretty familiar. Then they start opening a few of their drawings, and they start working with it. And within an hour, they're like, yeah, this works. OK, maybe one little button was different, or something was in a little bit of a different place. But yeah, every, everything is just familiar. I can go to work. That is much more powerful than me putting them in a long-term training class and trying to teach them feature by feature. So I will invest this time, this lunch break time, at, at a cost of some lunch uh, to get people familiar, comfortable. Once they learn that, then I can introduce some of the higher end features later. But my goal is to get them on BricsCAD and get them working straight away. Let them convince themselves that it's straightforward. Don't believe me, don't believe the marketing guy. Believe yourself. Try it, just try it. And that, that tends to work. When I do go into actual training, though, I, I'm, I've evolved into doing this. Have them go through a project they've already done. This means that it's a file set that they are familiar with, so they know the drawings. The only thing that's different is going to be the Bricks cat itself. They're printing to their live printers. They're saving to their live folders. They're using all the same tools they would ordinarily use, same project workflow, and we walk out of training, and they're like, yeah, I was able to get work done. So I don't really spend a lot of time teaching generic features. I just have them hop in and get to work, which is typically what their company wants them to do anyway. So ne never been yelled at because it works. OK, so if, if we get to the point where we've done all of this and people are starting to explore the software, um, we'd like to hear from you. Share your experiences. Uh, let us know how it's going. So Heidi, how can they do that? That is another really good question. We have all <laughs> kinds of resources available for you to connect with us. And I think Robert brings up a good point that it's not just following us, which you can on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. Um, the BricsCAD blog, which I pulled up um, earlier. So those are all channels where you can follow us, but it's not just about following us. We really encourage you to get engaged and to share your experiences on these various social media channels. And I know we have a lot of people here that do that already, uh, <coughs> that you know, see, come to these events or uh, watch things or learn things, and we'll share it um, with, with other people following on social media. And we definitely encourage that uh, for you to you know, become an active participant. So great, great places to learn, but also great places to share your knowledge. So if it's so cool, we should probably get out of the way and let people start talking about it, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Right. Thank you.